Did you know there's an area of your life the enemy really wants to control? Stay tuned on today's Move Your Mountain. You'll learn what that is and how you can gain victory there. We're also going to have some anointed worship that's going to bring the presence of the Lord. We're going to take Holy Communion, so make sure you get your elements to join us. And then as always, we'll conclude at the altar of the Lord praying for you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Move Your Mountain today. And you know, this is such a wonderful time of the year. We are right now celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. We don't want you to miss our special with Dr. Larry Huck. I know it will bless you, but we are here today to welcome the presence of the Lord and just allow yes. him to have his way so that you can be ministered to and receive whatever the Lord has for you. Mm -hmm. I'm Pastor Gary Mitrick here with Pastor Myra Bell, yes. Pastor Jonathan Schaefer, mm -hmm. Pastor Rebecca Luker and Pastor Rebecca, I love this time of year. I do too. There's so many different reasons because we realize that God is in control all throughout the year, but then in the fall, we're reminded of there's things in our lives that have to die and spring comes <laughs> and there's newness of life. I loved all the things that go along with fall. Like you said, all the Feast of Tabernacles and all of those things that go along with our faith that we can just look to and be reminded of the faithfulness of God, that he is present at any time in our lives. So it is, it's a great time of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and here in Pennsylvania, one of my favorite things with yeah. fall is the changing of the leaves. And maybe you're watching right now and you're at a place where they don't have seasons or the leaves don't change, but it's a beautiful reminder, like how Pastor mm -hmm. Rebecca said, that, that, that not only are there things that have to die, but even in the death of things, That's beauty right. can come out. And so maybe you're holding on to something right now in your life and the Lord is just trying to let that die so that it can create right. a beautiful vision for the next season of your life. And so I love driving around with my, my, my wife and my kids. Uh, we usually go up a little bit north here in the state of Pennsylvania yeah. just to walk in the woods at this time of the year. But it's a great time just to get closer to God and be reminded that he died for our sins and rose again. Right. Somebody's watching from another country saying, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not walking in the woods. <laughs> But I was driving on the highway the other day and I saw a, uh, the trees were green. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of all those mm -hmm. trees, there was one tree mm -hmm. that had begun to turn. And it made me think about in the midst of everything going on around us, we can still bloom That's because right. of Christ. We can still be all that we can be because of Christ. Well, well, we want to remind you that our prayer partners are always available to pray with you, whether it's something we will be sharing today or anything or anyone that's on your heart. Yeah. Don't carry that care. That's right. Cast it, release it on the Lord's shoulders. The number is there, 888-665-4483. And we're also going to take Holy Communion, I know many of you tell us how you look forward to that time. So get a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup, and get ready so that you can participate with us. Well, we're going to get into a great word today in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. The Apostle Paul begins by saying in verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. You see, you and I have to understand we are in a battle in this life. We are at war. We have 
Peter says an adversary. That word means an opponent, somebody who opposes us. But we have to remember that our family members, our boss, our friends, our people at church, they are not our enemy. Number one, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Amen. And that's, that's one of those weird things that we have to remember, especially when we see the state of affairs, particularly with politics. This becomes a big thing and we're, we're entering another election cycle and this is an important time of year, but it's so easy for us as believers, first and foremost, to get wrapped up in the fear, the anxiety, and even at certain times, the hatred towards the opposing party. And we have to remember that it's not these people, but these are demonic policies. There are things that are operating behind the scenes, not just in the United States, but all around the globe because our enemy is real. He is a global enemy that wants to see death, decay and destruction. And so rather than just bickering online or getting upset at our neighbor because of what sign they have in their front yard or whatever, we have to remember that there are principalities, there are, are forces of darkness at work and not to get locked in on hating the person that we need to share the gospel with and love on and pray for, but, but binding these principalities and coming uh, against yeah. these spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Yeah, and, and not only on that spiritual, the political front and things like that and the culture that's going on, mm. but even in your own family, there may be situations that you're facing in your family that you feel like, well, they just, they know how to push my buttons. Can I tell you, yes, the enemy lurks about <laughs> as a roaring lion, Come seeking on. whom he may devour. So he knows those things that are going to set you off. He knows how to push your buttons and he allows, he uses people to do that. But it's not the people that's the problem. It's the enemy that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So recognizing whatever it is that might be troubling you, whoever it may seem like is troubling you, understand that behind the scenes, it's the enemy at work. It is not your family member. It is not your friend. It is like Pastor Gary says, it's not your boss, though you may have issues with that. It's the enemy at work because he wants to bring destruction in your life. He wants to cause fear in your life. He wants to cause unrest in your life because if he can, then he takes your eyes off of God. He takes your eyes off of the one who's able to solve the issue and puts it on the problem, on the, on the adversity that you're going through right now. So in all that you're facing, remember, get mad at the enemy. Don't get mad at your friends. Yeah. Don't get mad at your family. Don't get mad at your boss. Get mad at the very enemy that is allowing you to go through this putting it on you right now. Get mad at him. He's the one who deserves our anger and, and our hatred. Yeah. Yeah, and I, as, I, as you were talking, I think about it, it's so easy for us to, because we can't see into the yeah, spirit realm with our natural eyes, we don't, we, we don't think about what's going on behind, yeah. uh, uh, behind the scenes or in the spirit realm. But we deal with it all the time. Yep. Yes, Nobody has ever seen the wind. Yeah. Nobody has ever seen it. We see the effects of it. Uh -huh. I know I walked outside of our house after a windstorm <laughs> and I'm looking in here, laying across yeah. the, uh, the walkway, it was a big tree. Mm -hmm. I saw the effects. We see the effects and mm -hmm. one of the effects is of the enemy is his working through people yeah. right. toward us or trying to work through our yes. flesh. Mm -hmm. But when we embrace that, we can't see the battle, yeah. but the battle is going on. Yeah. And even if you don't like to fight, we have to fight. Yeah. That's right. We are in the battle. We, uh, years ago, we used, to sing a song. <laughs> we used to sing a song. I'm in the army yeah. of mm -hmm. the Lord. And if I die, let me die in the army mm -hmm. of the Lord. The battle is not against flesh and blood though. The battle is not, it's against what you can't see. Mm -hmm. So just like we will prepare, we will put coats on, we will buy heavier uh, uh, sweats, sweatsuits and that sort of thing. We have to prepare That's right. yeah. during the time of peace, yeah. Yeah. prepare for the battle. Mm -hmm. Prepare, prepare our minds, prepare our hearts for the battle that we are in. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because if you could, if the enemy could get you to keep the battle in the flesh, mm -hmm. he's going to win. That's because yeah. he's getting mm -hmm. you out of yep. the spirit and into the flesh. And that's why you and I, if we want to win this battle, 
we've got to remember who our real enemy is. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's several of you watching, but there's someone watching. You, you're having a real animosity with one of your neighbors, hmm. and you two have just been going at it, and they're doing things that really are just getting under your skin, and you've just been angry and furious and just in the flesh about it. And today is a Come word on. for you. It's Come a on. rhema word yeah. for you. Yeah. And there's others of you. You're just clashing with somebody, yep. but you're clashing in the flesh. You see. And you got to get your eyes off of that That's person right. yeah. and get back in the spirit. Yeah, there, there's when Pastor Rebecca was sharing and you just brought confirmation to it, I felt like I heard the, the Lord say that when specifically people, they're decoys mm -hmm. because there's, there's, a, there's a reserve of spiritual ammunition that you have and the enemy would love to set up these That's people it. as decoys so that you launch all of your volleys of ammunition yeah. and attacks yeah, against word. those yep. people and so that you don't have anything to then fight the real battle because mm -hmm. we see in Daniel chapter 7, I believe it's verse 25, where it reminds us one of the enemy's tactics is to wear out the saints. Yep. And there was the, the, uh, the great boxer uh, Cassius Clay. Mm -hmm. His mama named him Clay, I'm going to call him Clay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but But... He, in one of his fights, uh, employed a tactic called the rope-a-dope tactic, mm -hmm. where he got, I believe it was Joe Frazier, who was just a puncher, to punch himself out. Uh, uh, Clay just kept dodging and different, and he got him to wear himself mm -hmm. out by expending all of his energy on attacks mm -hmm. that weren't going to hurt yeah. him. And once he had gotten him to wear himself out, mm -hmm. now he was ripe for the attack back. And the enemy right mm -hmm. now would love for you setting up people, family members, mm -hmm. situations, situations at your job, your neighborhood as decoys for yes, you to yes. launch your attack, yeah. spend your energy and effort there so that he can creep in through the back door and have his way with you. But today you've heard the word, like Pastor mm -hmm. Gary said, you're not gonna let it happen because our fight is not a fleshly right. fight, that's it right. is a spiritual fight, and that's where the reserve and the resources for yeah. fighting rest. Yeah. All right. So if you need prayer, why don't you call the prayer line, 888-665-4483. Then Paul goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, for the weapons, we have weapons mm -hmm. of yeah. our warfare. They are not carnal, they're not fleshly. Oh, but they are mighty in God, mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. See, Satan does not travel alone. He travels in a pack, in clans. And there's always a leader. Matthew 12 calls him the strong man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The main leader of that pack. But you and I, and what does he do? He sets up strongholds mm -hmm. in regions, in areas. What is a principality? It's a prince, a demonic spirit over a region or an area of your life, whether it's over your family, whether it's over your church, whether it's over your city. Yeah. What, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a, a, a principality that he likes to set up a stronghold. Mm -hmm. But you and I have the weaponry yeah. to, number yeah. two, shatter that stronghold in the name of yeah. Jesus. Yes, and that power that we possess is just phenomenal. I think about a lot of times people will say, well, I've been praying and they'll get an attitude with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been praying about that thing. I've been praying about that neighbor. I've been praying about this situation and that situation. But the thing I think about is the passage in scripture where it says, humble yourself yeah. under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due season, casting your cares on him mm. for he cares. They go together. When you come to the end of yourself, mm -hmm. then you're a good candidate. When you come to the end of yourself, to really pray yeah. Yeah. because then you're in a place where you know you can't fix it. Yeah. We don't know what to pray. The scripture says we don't know what to pray as we ought, yeah. 
But when we come to the end of ourselves and allow our God to make all the difference, to direct our steps, to word our mouths in his yeah. wisdom, mm -hmm. or sometimes he will tell you, just shut up. Mm. Just be quiet. So he says, hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> hold your peace. Don't, don't. Mm. But he'll tell you, zip it. Yes. <laughs> Whatever it is, that prayer, prayer is one of our weapons. Yeah. And God requires us to come mm -hmm. to the end of ourselves yep. in our hearts so that he can work. Yeah. Be still yeah. and know that I am That's God. Right. He said, I will be exalted among the heathen. Yeah. I will be exalted in the earth. Yeah, that's right. and that's one of the things too, because I know a stronghold for a lot of people, and maybe you're watching right now, is anxiety. And the enemy would actually love to get you to pray anxious prayers mm. to where you become that person where I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. And there are times, like Pastor Myra said, just be still and know that he is God. Come out and see the salvation of your Lord. There are some times where you just have to understand the, 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 that text we just read. It's they're mighty in God. Sometimes That's you it. just have to know that That's you're it. in God. And the fact that you spoke it, the fact that you requested it means that it is already taking place. But that does not give you the right to remain passive. We have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Strongholds require stronger people. And so that means that we need to be strong, not, not just in, in uh, understanding or wisdom, but strong in God, yeah, mm -hmm. strong in a fear of the Lord, because that is the beginning of understanding right. and wisdom. And so sometimes we just have to find ourselves in God and know that the battle's already won. Yeah. It's not our fight to begin with. Yeah. He wants to see it happen more than we want to see it happen and just let him do it and sit back like the psalmist says in Psalm 2, take the posture of our God who it says, why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain <laughs> and gather together against the Lord and his anointed? How many of you know, if you're in Christ, you're the Lord's anointed Amen. right now. And it, it says that the Lord sits enthroned in the heavens and he laughs. Amen. That's it. And it should give you peace to know oh God. that God is watching out for Come you. On. When he, when we know that he is the one who is going to take care of the battle, that he's going to take care of our enemy, not enemies people wise, but our enemy, enemy wise saint. And he's already destroyed him. He's already defeated him. So the things that are happening right now are just trying to get us upset as we've been sharing, mm. trying to get us upset. So you as a believer need to take that stance as a Christian and say, I recognize what is happening. See, it's easy just to let things go. It's easy to just mm -hmm. enter, yep. engage in reacting in a fight instead of responding by saying, God, I see what's going on mm -hmm. here. I know that the enemy is at work and I know that he's using my neighbor or he's using my family member. He's using others around me. He's using the culture to try to get me in a upheaval inside but I am not going to do it because I know that you have already given me victory. I don't have to get anxious. I don't have to get fearful. Can I tell you, you are in the army of God. Come you on. are a soldier. Soldiers just don't lay down and play nope. dead. Soldiers are prepared. They're ready for battle. They get the training that yep. they need. They get the training before the battle happens. So if you haven't even reached that battle state yet, which I pretty much know that each one of us as Christians have reached a battle state at some point. But during that time where you have a little bit more peace, spend that time digging mm -hmm. in and gaining your ground, gaining your armor, gaining your weaponry, that strength that you need as a child of God. So that way when the battle comes, you're able to recognize that you aren't battling with flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but it's a spiritual warfare that's going on because Satan knows that God has something great for you. And as long as you are in tune with the Holy Come Spirit, on. you will yeah. accomplish what God wants for you. But when you start laying your spirit man aside and letting your flesh rise up and seeing the things with your own, your fleshly eyes in the carnal, then you're going to end up giving up and saying, okay, well, I, I don't care. And then the enemy wins. Don't allow him to win. Christ has made you more than a conqueror today. You can overcome. You will overcome because greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Amen. Sometimes we're waiting for God to do something. Yeah. And he says, wait a minute, I've given you See. the authority. I've equipped you with mm -hmm. the weaponry. Right. You shatter that stronghold. Oh. You address those principalities, those mm -hmm. powers. Mm -hmm. You know, someone once said, don't complain about what you permit. Ah. You, see. you have a key of authority. Whatever you bind, 
shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lo loose shall be loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, casting down those arguments. Mm -hmm. King James says imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. And then here's the key, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Yes. I spoke to you earlier. What is the area of your life that the enemy wants to control? The mind. Mm -hmm. The third point is the battle ground for Satan is the mind. Whoever controls the mind, the Bible says, as a man or woman thinks, mm -hmm. that's eventually what you act out and become. So you've got to win the battle in your mind. Mm -hmm. You've got to take authority. You've got to discern thoughts. And That's if it. they're not God, That's if it. they're contrary to his word, they oppose the knowledge of God, then don't dwell on them. Don't nurse them. Don't rehearse them. All right. All right. Cast them down. Cast them out and replace them with the truth of God's word. Amen. Yeah. What you feed will grow. Mm -hmm. That's just a, a, a principle. It works physically. It works spiritually. And, and the mind is the headwaters of the river in your life. And that's why the enemy would love to get your emotions flustered. That's one of the big places where I see, especially now, you, you can work people up into a lather and get them upset about a thing and doing all of this and that. Now their emotions have overtaken their mind. Satan knows that your mind is the control center for, for, for your entire being. And so if he can get you there, whether it's through your emotions or whether it's through the things that you allow into your mind, into your ears, into your eyes, these are, these are receptors but if you get the word of God in front of you and you allow the word of God to renew your mind, you now have weaponry for, for recalibrating, mm -hmm. resetting, put, putting your brain into right alignment so you can walk in the spiritual things that God has for you. That's why it mm -hmm. uses terms like lofty, uh, the, the NIV says lofty opinions or imaginations or mm -hmm. ideas because mm -hmm. the, the, the world knows, the enemy knows that he can captivate our minds through what we see on our phones. Right. He can captivate our minds through what we digest through the news. He can captivate our mind. You know, someone said, oh, the, this individual just looks so captivating. These are all tricks of the enemy. Mm. But allow your mind to be captivated by the word of God, the presence of God, mm. the things of God, and see how that takes root in your life. Yeah, our, our minds. I, I'm very visual. I'm a visual learner as well. And I think about our hearts being like a conference room. Mm -hmm. And if you think about a conference room, a lot of times there'll be a waiting area outside of the main area. So the main part of us being our heart, well, but, but the enemy will throw thoughts into that waiting room, hoping you mm -hmm. will take the thoughts that he said, yeah. the things that he, he, he wants you to do. He has power, no doubt yeah. about it. But we have power and authority. Mm -hmm. We have the ability yes. through Christ yeah. because of his living in us through his spirit yeah. and greater is he that's in us. Yeah. We have the power, but we also have the right to exercise yeah. that power so we can cast out mm. of that waiting room the thoughts of the enemy. We don't have to embrace it and take that's it right. into our thought processes. Jesus said, why well, think you evil in your heart? Mm -hmm. wow. We think about things and we decide whether we're going to do them, not do them out of our hearts. There's a lot of players in our, in our heart, our, our spirit, our, our, our conscious, our, those, the word of God in there. But we have the power and authority to walk in God's word, to exercise God's word. And guess what? It works. If we will employ the word of God, we will employ those things that he said, bring every thought into captivity, run after that thought. 
the enemy crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive my vernacular. <laughs> but the enemy will do, he will throw anything mm -hmm. yeah. decoys. He will throw anything false flags, misinformation. He will do so many things, but we have the power and authority to bring every yeah. dot into subjection. That's right, and you know, it is, it's sometimes difficult because we have to be active in doing it. That's we right. can't just lay back and just allow things or just yep. think that things are just gonna fall into place. We have to be actively participating in what God is doing in our lives. You are a soldier in the army of Christ. God's spirit is within you. You have everything you need to be triumphant, to conquer. You have it within you because Jesus is living and dwelling in you. You don't need to just succumb to mm -hmm. the forces of the enemy. You need to rise up and say, I'm That's tired it. of feeling this way. I'm tired of these attacks going on in my life and take that stand and say, it's not gonna happen any longer. You have to take those thoughts captive. I'm reminded of that, the man in Mark chapter seven, who his son was, you know, going convulsing. He was possessed. And he went to Jesus and says, I believe, help my unbelief. He recognized that he, he believed in Jesus, but he also recognized there were thoughts there. There were unbelieving thoughts. And he said, Jesus, help my unbelief. He was taking that thought captive. In your life, what is it that you have allowed? What thought have you allowed to just grow and mm -hmm. become bigger than the God who is able to conquer that thing? We do that so many times. Yeah. We put our problems, we put our circumstances above God. And he says, don't you know who I am? Am. Don't you know that I created this universe? Don't you know that before you were born, I knew you and I had a purpose and plan for you? Don't you know that? Don't you think that I can take care of that? I want to encourage you today. Know that he can. He is a faithful God. As we do our part, take those thoughts captive. Don't allow them to escape. Do our part in actively participating in this relationship with the Lord. You are going to see that you are able to conquer every giant that you face and they will be defeated by the power of God. Amen. Pastor Rebecca, we're going to ask you to slip over to the worship yes. set. Pastor Rebecca is going to sing for us a song that so ties in mm -hmm. to what we've been talking about. Amen. How we have weaponry, we have authority, but where is our authority? Well, it's in the name. Our God is strong in battle And our God will never fail Through him all chains are broken. Through him the sick are healed. And in the name of Jesus, giants are defeated. Every single mountain has to move. Your faithful to your promise. You finish what you started there is none as powerful as you jesus 
you've just joined us, you're watching Move Your Mountain. We've been looking at that passage in 2 Corinthians where we are in a battle, but it's not against flesh and blood. We do have weaponry to pull down, to shatter right. those strongholds. And the battleground for Satan is our mind. That's We've got right. to take yes. those negative, ungodly thoughts that oppose the word, the yes. truth of God. Take them captive. Put a lasso around them and <laughs> pull them down so they don't run free and wild in your mind. That's we also want to remind you that in just a few moments, we're going to take Holy Communion and we want you to join us. Please get some elements, a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup so you can join and participate. The prayer line is open, 888-665-4483. If you need prayer, make sure you call because we're going to end our time together at the altar of God. We've had so many people call in and then they called back because the Lord answered their Come prayer. On, we yes, love answers yes, to prayer. Yes, they yes. encourage all of us. They're like faith builders and mm -hmm. stepping stones mm -hmm. for us. Stanley called the other day for his daughter. She was scheduled for open heart surgery. Oh he called for prayer. The prayer partner agreed. She went in for the surgery. The doctor ran another test and said, wait a minute. She doesn't need open heart surgery. <laughs> there was another doctor, Dr. Jesus, uh, that intervened uh, and touched her heart. Praise God. Yes, I thank God. for Stanley, thank you for calling back. Yes. Yes. Thank God. You know, the scriptures say, tell of his wondrous works. Mm -hmm. Tell. You encourage somebody when you call back. Yeah. So when God does it for you, yeah. maybe it's not the way you want it to be, but you know that he interceded on your behalf. Call us back. I know I tap into the prayer partners, Pastor Gary. I, 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 I love them. I, if something's going on in my, in my body, I will tap into mm -hmm. the prayer partners. They've prayed for me. They've laid hands on me and prayed and God did it. God did what was necessary in my life. So if you want to call in, please do so. 888-665-4483. Call in and tell what the Lord did. Amen. And then Mary called uh, for prayer for her daughter because her granddaughter left the house. They didn't know where she was and where she went. She called the prayer line. The two of them agreed together. She said in a couple of days, her daughter called her mom and said, Mom, I'm coming home. Amen. <laughs> two, two prayers for, for children yeah. right there answered. Yeah. What's going on in your family? Yeah. Do you need the Lord to intervene? Yeah. Pick up the phone. God is in the business of putting families together. So give us a call, 888-665-4483. The prayer partner is going to pray. And as we always do at the end of our program, we're going to pray over it at the altar of God. But man, what a powerful, powerful testimony. Amen. Restoration is God's will. That's right. And then uh, McKayline called. Uh, she was having terrible pain in her knees. She called the prayer partner, then it says she called back and she said the pain is completely gone. Mm -hmm. She's walking around without any pain. She's rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for his healing power. McKaylin, I'm so thankful that you called in just as all these other ones did. You know, you may be at home sitting and you may be saying, oh, it's great to hear what God has done for other people. but..." I don't know that he can do that for me. Can you just rewind this a little bit later yeah. and remind yourself you need to cast down those imaginations because right. the same God that healed them is the Amen. same God who will heal you if you ask him. That's right. Provide whatever you are needing right now. All you have to do is ask him. It was provided for you through what we're going to be doing right now in communion. Yeah, that's Amen. Right. Yeah. So if you have your elements, let's get them now. And the Bible encourages us before we partake of Holy Communion, mm -hmm. to examine our own hearts. 
make sure we're not holding on to unforgiveness against anyone. Remember what we said, <laughs> the battle's not against flesh and blood. If you have to forgive somebody, now's a great time to do it. If you're holding an offense, or maybe you've just been wounded and rejected by someone, and it's just really caused a hurt and a pain that you've been carrying. Now is the time. Now is the time to get your heart right with God. That's right. If you would just say, dear Jesus, just say that, dear Jesus, I choose to forgive anyone that's hurt me, wounded or rejected me. I release out of my heart all unforgiveness, any grudges, offenses, all ill feelings. Cleanse my heart now and set me free in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Yes, yes, yes. And then after we've done that, Pastor Jonathan, now we can ask the Lord to cleanse us, right? Yeah, especially if you've never accepted that cleansing from the beginning. Let, let's just be honest, this is a piece of cracker bread and grape juice. But when you truly receive the Lord Jesus, this now becomes his body broken for you and his blood shed for you. And so if you've never made that decision, if you've never said, I, I want Christ to come and forgive me, it's, it's impossible to truly forgive until you've truly been forgiven. The Bible says we love because he first loved us. And so right now, if you're watching, you've never truly received the love of Christ by inviting him into your life to be the Lord and Savior of your life, casting not just your cares, but your sin upon him and receiving his lordship, his rulership in your life, then don't, don't go another moment. Just ask him right now and say, Lord, I'm, I'm a sinner and I, I repent of my sin. I turn away from my evil and I turn to you. I trust in you. I throw myself on your mercy now and I acknowledge you as my king. I acknowledge you as God. That means you now rule my life. I don't, I don't want to live my own life. I want to live yours. And I receive your life now. I receive eternal life through my faith acknowledgement of your lordship and your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Would you pray over the bread for us? Father, we thank you for loving us so much that you gave your only begotten son. And Jesus, we thank you for being so willing to come down, to throw off your glory and come down to give your life in our stead, to be the propitiation, the substitute for us so that we could have life. So we remember now what you did by the eating of this bread. We remember, we think about and remember what you did and we just appreciate it so much. And so we give you glory yes. for our being able to remember what you did. Amen. All right, take your cracker, your bread, your wafer, eat of it now and be healed in the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Just let healing virtue go through your body now in Jesus' name. Pastor Rebecca, pray over the cup. Father, it's in these moments that we have opportunity to reflect on everything you've done for us, God. How many times we've rejected you, yet you were still consistently calling us and drawing us to you, Father. You didn't spare any expense when you went to Calvary, but you gave every ounce of blood that you could so that we would know that we are redeemed and we are saved and you loved us that much that you gave everything for us. And God, we just thank you for the stripes that were on your back, for your body being broken and your blood that was shed for our sins so that we do not have to pay the penalty any longer because you took it for us. Yes. Father, we thank you and we rejoice and we remember with all grateful hearts what you've done for us in Jesus name. Amen. All right, take your cup and drink and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb.
Thank you, Lord. Well, if you are blessed by programs like Move Your Mountain or the lineup of in-house programs we have or our national programs, some we carry once a week, some every day, I'd like to encourage you to pray about planting a seed into this ministry. Let me give you our address. It's Cornerstone Television Network, 1 Signal Hill Drive, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. We also want to remind you that we have a monthly newsletter that if you would just call our prayer line, 888-665-4483, this is free. We'll send it to you with no obligation. You'll enjoy. There's articles. It has our lineup of programming. There's always testimonies, recipes in it. I know it will be a blessing to you. We also want to rejoice with Overton, who called from Denton, Texas. And he prayed and rededicated his heart and life to Jesus Christ. We welcome you and celebrate with you. Yes. Well, we're going to go over to Pastor Rebecca as we head over to the altar while she sings this powerful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide with strength for today and right hope for tomorrow and blessings Yes, it is. Great is thy faithfulness. On morning by morning, new mercies I see. Oh, oh I have needed thy hands, hath provided. Great What do you say besides wow? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. He is so faithful, Pastor Gary. He's faithful in giving us salvation. He's faithful through our walk with him throughout the years. And he's faithful that one day we're going to see him face to face in glory. So I don't care what you're going through right now. God is faithful and he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Just keep trusting and praying and seeking him. Amen. Yeah. You know, Deuteronomy 7 and verse 9 says, for the Lord your God, he is a faithful God. Yes, that's right. He yes. is the faithful God, showing mercy mm. and grace to a thousand generations. Yes, yes. It, I can say I was young, now I'm old, but <laughs> I've never seen the righteous forsaken. God is so faithful to Come us. On. I thank God for that song because it resonates in me. He is faithful and he will be faithful to you. He will be faithful in the midst Amen. of your trials That's and right. in the midst of your tribulations. If you turn to him, don't go to uh, uh, the, the, the alcohol or chemicals to soothe. Our God will take care of yes. anything and everything that Amen. touches you. And there's some of you watching right now and you're just like, well, I've been so faithful to him. Why, what, why do things, because I look mm. at these prayer requests and I see faithful followers of Jesus. And I just want to remind you, mm. it was actually Job's faithfulness and righteousness that caused the enemy to want to attack him. And God allowed it to happen. Why? Because it proved his faithfulness. And so whatever you are going through right now, mm -hmm. whatever is happening right now, it might not be because you've messed up or sinned. It might That's be right. because you have been faithful in God, yeah. just like gold, Peter says in First yeah. Peter 1, is refined by the fire. So too is our faith mm -hmm. refined by the, by the trials Jesus. of persecution and difficulty. And so I just encourage you, your faithfulness will be tested and proved <laughs> and his faithfulness will be proved to you yeah. as you bear up under these difficult things, knowing that God has good in it for you. That's right. Well, we're gonna to pray together. The altar is filled with many of your requests. You've called, you've written in. These are all the requests that have just come in recently. Mm -hmm. So join your faith with ours, even if you haven't had a chance to call. We tell you all the time, there's no distance in the Holy Spirit. Pastor Myra is going to begin and lead for us. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the privilege. And so we ask you in the name of Jesus to touch and move on the behalf of every single one who has exercised their faith. We ask you in the name of Jesus, that powerful, matchless name of Jesus, that you move on their behalf. 
we ask you to strengthen those who are discouraged by the way, who are discouraged by trials and tribulation. Remind them that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions, but you deliver your people out of them all. And so help us to rejoice about what you have done, what you're doing, and what you shall do. And we say thank you. Amen. We say thank you. Would you slip over to the piano so you can lead us in a time of worship? Pastor Rebecca. Father, we just thank you that you are mighty God. You are powerful God. And you are the only one who can undergird us with strength to be able to overcome and conquer everything that we are facing right now in this moment. And Father, there are those who have called in that are needing healing in their bodies, healing in their families, God. And Lord, there are even those that this message today has resonated with them because they are under an attack of their mind. And Father, I pray right now that every lie that the enemy has spoken to them, every bondage that he has tried to place on them, that you would loose it in the name of Jesus, that their thoughts would be thoughts that you put in their minds, that they would take those negative thoughts captive, Father, and that they would begin to think like you would think, like you want them to think. Father, I pray that you would allow your word to take preeminence in their lives, God, that they would dig in, that they would seek you, Father, knowing that you are the only answer. Counselors are good. Pastors are good. But God, you are the source of everything that they need. Help them to be compelled to spend time with you. Lord, take away every distraction so that they are forced to spend time with you, God. And when they do, let them find the refreshing power of your Holy Spirit is there to bring victory and triumph over their situations. God, I pray that you would set them free from addiction, set them free from the bondages of self-loathing, Father. Lord, whatever it might be, you come in and intervene and make it right. And we thank you because you are a faithful God. You are going to do it according to your will in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you care for us. You care for us. Your word tells us to cast our anxiety on you because you care for us. And so, Lord, we just lift up right now each and every person that is watching, each and every need that is represented here. And we ask you to release, Lord God, the evidence of your care. Maybe it's a specific thing, a financial breakthrough, an item. Maybe it's a relationship being restored. Maybe it's just as Philippians 4 says, that your perfect peace would come and guard hearts and minds. But whatever it is, you know the need because you care. And we ask you, Lord God, to allow your care to be tangible and present and invigorating right now in the lives of your people. Lord, we thank you not only for the opportunity to pray for these needs, but we thank you for the faith to bring these needs before you. And we surrender ourselves and these needs to you now and to your care, trusting you in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, help us all to realize our battle is not against flesh and blood. Lord, we Bind that strong man, Satan, over our lives, our family, yes. our health, yes. our finances. Yes. We shatter every stronghold. And Lord, I just plead the blood of Jesus over every mind, emotions, subconscious, that we would take every thought captive that opposes the knowledge and truth of your word in Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Well, we're going to go to Pastor Myra as she takes us out in a time of worship. Just welcome his wonderful presence as she ministers to us. Open our eyes.
Every now and then, life gets the best of us, and we need a reminder to keep calm and trust God. Simple but striking, the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings provides messages of reassurance to help carry you through tough and challenging times. These small cards fit into the palm of your hand and will turn your focus to the one who is in control of everything. Inside, you'll find 51 colorful double-sided cards featuring a combination of inspirational scripture verses and faith-based quotes. Add it to a get well basket or use it to encourage a teacher, family member, or friend. Or save it for the time you need encouragement. Be sure to ask for the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings when you give today. It's our way of saying thanks as you encourage others by providing life-changing Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. 